Staying motivated is tricky, especially in the writing industry when you are your biggest critic, trying to stay on topic, trying to write, especially if you are not a full-time writer, if writing is not your full-time job, if it's not even a part-time job and it's just a hobby, it is so hard to stay motivated once, well not once, many times actually. Recently, most recently, I was writing Project Book, and I do have vlogs on this, so definitely go check them out. I will put them in the cards above. I have been stumped. I have been on hat tiers for many, many years, trying to figure out how to write, how to finish my projects. In fact, if I'm being honest here with y'all, I did not finish my first project, my first book, until maybe the summer of 2020. And I know y'all are gonna say, well, maybe that's because of COVID, maybe it's because of lockdown, everyone's trying new hobbies, and that could be, but I think it's also something about motivation. You need to stay, you need to persevere, you need to stay motivated, you need to write down those words, and this is how. These are my top five tips on how to stay motivated when you are writing your project. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe down below, hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video, and let's head in to the video. So, number one is prompts. Use creative prompts. I know that there are so many Instagrammers, Twitters, YouTubers who will put out daily prompts for y'all to write with. Now this tip has never actually worked for me, which is why it is my number one tip. <laughs> but I think that it is a great way, especially if you're doing flash fiction or just you want something to warm up with. Writing to these prompts are really interesting. In fact, I will admit, I watched Abby Emmons' video on character development and Somewhere in her video, she talked about character manipulation, and I thought that was so amazing. I wanted to add that into my whip. So, for one of the works that I am writing, I added a scene where my MC was totally manipulative, but it drove the plot forward. So I kind of, I, I like that scene. <laughs> the second aspect is change point of view. Now, let me preface this by saying I'm very picky on my point of view. I'm that type of person who, if you give me a random perspective and there's only one chapter with that perspective, I'm like, no, absolutely not, okay? I need like an equal amount of perspective changes and I don't like more than three perspective changes in the entirety of the book. And now that is a very subjective opinion and I know not everybody is like that, but I will say that when writing, sometimes the best way to get out of a funk is to write in another character's perspective. So maybe it's not your main character, maybe it's your main character's love interest. It's just interesting to see how that character kind of thinks about the situation and what that character knows of the situation. It's it's nice and it's cool and you can always delete, okay? Kill your darlings. If you do not like this perspective, delete it after. Maybe all you need is to get you motivated to write again is that one chapter from a different perspective and then because you only have that one chapter, you can get rid of it. Or maybe it will start you on a different path where you're like, wait a second, I think my book should be more than one perspective. Let's change that, you know? it's. Maybe that's my plan store <laughs> coming out, but you know, just go with the flow, okay? The second, the third, sorry, the third method to gain motivation is CPs. Okay, so <laughs> I am such a bad editor. I love editing, but I, when it comes to personal projects, I'm like, no, 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 no. I do not like to wait the whatever amount of time that people suggest you wait before you go back and edit your novel. I'm like, no, I just want to finish this now. I want my final draft now. I want to print it out at my print shop and get it hard copy, paperback, whatever. <laughs> so CPs are literally the best. There are so many ways to get CPs. If you want to know a 
more substantial way at finding CPs, what they are, etc, etc. I may make a video on it later on, but I found my critique partners on social media and they have stood by me for this project. One of my critique partners made me fan art and it just, it warmed my heart. It made me, it, it made my characters real, okay? It made my characters real and I was like, I can't not write this story now. I need to finish this story so that my characters that are real can continue being real and not just wiped off the face of the earth <laughs> and stuck inside my, my brain. So my CPs have been amazing and also maybe it's also just me but I love looking at feedback. I love going through my work and seeing readers relate and argue with my main character in my work. I love that. I think it's hilarious and I know a lot of people are like, no my work has to be perfect when I send it out to people, but that's not what a CP is. CPs are there for the rough drafts. CPs are there for the rewrites that you do countless times over when you're like, okay, so I just sent you 10 pages and I hate it, so now I'm gonna rewrite it and send it all to you again. Your CPs are there for you. And I cannot stress this enough because, you know, that's how I got through Project Book. And also, another thing, okay, when I send these works off to my CPs, if you're really worried, just, just have a little disclaimer. Say that this is your first draft. Literally, I sent them my rewrite, and my rewrite, and my rewrite. <laughs> and each rewrite I sent off to them was the first version of the rewrite. So let's talk about grammar errors, let's talk about spelling, etc, etc. It's all there. It's all there and you know what, that's <laughs> that's just how I roll because then that says to me once I get back my feedback and everything, I'm like, right, this is why I'm writing this character. This is why I'm writing this story. This is why I love what I'm doing. This is why I'm going to continue with this work. This is why I'm going to continue putting time out of my day so that I can work on this with. The fourth thing that I have is writing sprints. Okay, writing sprints, I love writing sprints. You are sitting down with a bunch of motivational writers who are also writing. In fact, I'm just gonna point out there, so I'm doing a world, I'm participating in the World Ride Write-a-thon, which is June 6th. My sprint is at 2.30 p.m. EST, so everyone come out and join if y'all need a little bit more motivation for the summer. That is in the middle of camp, I believe. Or is camp in July? I totally forget. But, <laughs> nevertheless, it's a writing sprint, and I love writing sprints. Sometimes I'm not even writing on writing sprints. They're productive. They help me get motivated to do things, and then my reward after is to talk to people. I get to talk to whoever is hosting the writing sprint, I get to talk to the people in the comments, and it is amazing, and it just brings the writing community together. So definitely go check out writing sprints. I know Devin Cutting has a playlist of writing sprints. Another way to find writing sprints is just search up writing, and then in the filters on YouTube, search up live, etc, etc. That is so helpful. You're surrounded by people who are motivated. Basically, you're just allowing people to influence you. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's a great way to stay on topic. I could not finish Nano if I did not have writing sprints, okay? It is a life changer. The last idea that I have for y'all is take some time off. I know this is like, okay, but I want to stay motivated. I don't want to procrastinate. And taking time off is not the same as procrastinating. Taking time off is allowing your brain to take a step back, refresh, take a breather, and ignore your work for a couple of days. Because chances are, when you are not motivated, you are not motivated because either you have lost interest in your own book, you're just too busy, you don't have time, you're feeling pressured by deadlines to finish, or maybe there's something actually wrong with your plot. Maybe something's not adding up for you. What be it the characters, the arcs, the plot, the subplots, the genres, the way your story is written, the style, something like that. And so by taking a bit of time off to reevaluate what you're doing in life, what you're doing with your whip, 
you can come back with a fresh pair of eyes and reread your work. But don't edit. Don't edit it. Make notes in your work if you must, but don't edit. Um, that you can come back to later. And you can figure out what's wrong, what you're doing wrong with this story. It took me three rewrites to figure out what I was doing wrong in Project Book. And I will talk about that later on in my upcoming vlog, which is the video for next week. But yeah, it... Sometimes you just need to take a step back. Sometimes you need to reread and then take a step back or take a step back then reread and you know, that is okay. That is okay. No one is going to tell you that you need to write 24 hours a day, especially if you have a home life, if you are out working full time, if you are a student and you need to focus on other things. No one can make you inferior except for yourself. This is your work. This is, you can take as long as you need to write your work because at the end of the day, it's yours. <laughs> so thank you so much. I hope this helped y'all find a little bit of motivation to write your story. I know y'all can do it. Go out there, write your story, write your thoughts, get it onto a piece of paper, get it onto anything else, and relax, have fun. If it's not fun, then you're doing something wrong. And I will see y'all next week for a writer's vlog. Bye.